all we do here is just make sure everybody follows the rules and nobody fights, and if they fight, we break it up. It's not like in Canada, though, where bouncers will beat the crap out of a guy for getting in a fight. Like, you can't really do that here. So, it's a little more peaceful here. A little easier, I guess. All you guys, you pay like 3,500 yen, which is like 35 bucks. All you can drink all night. The bar's open from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. So six hours of all you can drink. So it was a well, pretty wild bar. Like people had a lot of fun, and some people had a little too much fun, and uh, so they would just be throwing up all over the place, and they'd carry drunks out all the time. And there wasn't too many fights because in Japan you don't see too many fights. <laughs> There are times when I really liked it because it was fun, you know. You drink after work and hang out with everybody and the girls and the guys are cool. And but most of the time you're just babysitting and it fucking sucked till fucking 5 a.m. past 5 a.m. Looking for a key. <laughs> Looking for a key? Yeah, that's the only problem tonight. <laughs> Teaching English though is it's, it's not a bad job. Um, personally, I don't like it, but there are times when I did like it. It's just uh, I don't know. I prefer to do other things. Uh, I like teaching the kids. Time went by fast. Miori, oh, there she is. Miori, what's your favorite animal? Your favorite? Let's see. Ah, first A. Good. One more. Copper. Good. C A R is how you spell car. Very good, Isabel. Oh, I can't do chin ups there now. That fight with Nita was my most important fight in Japan because it got me in with Nicholas, A Factory, Bungling Bay, you know, got me a place to live, got like good support, friends, things like that. So it was a big fight to win. Oh, this is uh, an example. This is the third time I'm wringing out my shirt. So if you can't wring out your shirt, then you're not training hard enough. <coughs> That's the third time. <laughs> My name is Nicholas Pettis. In Japan, they know me as the Blue Eyed Samurai. In the beginning, when I first came, I was just enjoying uh, to study under Masoyama. He was still alive, he was still teaching us four or five times a week, and it was just awesome to be here. I progressed very fast because uh, we only, you know, basically trained every day, six, seven hours sometimes. Um, and I became very strong in a very short period of time. By the time I was uh, 22 years old and had graduated as the last um, student of uh, OEMA Mastasa, I uh, won the European uh, Heavyweight Karate Championships and placed fifth in the World Championships that same year. After that, uh, a couple years went by, I just uh, continued my karate career. <coughs> K1 was a big organization that had just started blooming and Andy Hug, uh, being a former Kyokushin, also heavyweight uh, karate champion, uh, was a big inspiration for me. I wanted to basically um, try and see if there was a chance for me to become like the next Andy Hug. So when the offer from K1 came, I said, yes, I'll do it. And uh, at the age of 26, I started kickboxing professionally in K1. 
I became ex accepted uh, accepted as as um, as one of them. Uh, everything changed. You know, eventually they ended up calling me the Blue Eyed Samurai, which, which is probably one of the the highest honoring um, titles that one as a foreigner could you know try and accomplish over here. That lasted for about 10 years uh, until I had my hip replaced last year. Uh, and right now I'm still doing rehab. So uh, we'll see what happens from here, from here on. <laughs> I'm basically 37 years old today, so it's gonna be hard to tell you if I'm actually getting back into the ring or not. But I've been fortunate enough to meet guys like Jan and uh, Koichi and all the other fighters that I have here in the gym. And now I'm spending most of my time teaching these kids to get into the ring so they can perform to their uttermost. Uh, I love uh, the attitude towards martial arts in Japan because it's um, it's not just uh, something that the kids come in and do for fun or they'll try it a little bit so they can go out and try and kick someone's ass, you know, they come in and they dedicate themselves to it and I love teaching fighters uh, because they demand so much more than um, regular people if I may say so. Um, but at the same time, the more you push them, the more they bounce back at you and uh, I don't think you get that anywhere else in the world. So uh, I guess that's what really made me stay in Japan. The affection for this teacher, the respect uh, relationship between the teacher and the student, which is always uh, very important. Both these guys sparring now, they're both K1 fighters. That's good, uh, the kid in the orange, he's uh, fighting on uh, Sunday, next Sunday. Uh, it's Crush. Crush is like the feeder league to K1. And he's a K1 fighter also. On the other side, some tall. The little guy I was sparring with, he's an uh, all Japan uh, Muay Thai champion, uh, WBC champion. It's got to be more than just doing a set movement on a bench. You know, you can't predict how you're going to have to pick up the weight. So things like kettlebells and war machines and stuff like that really assist you to build full muscle strength and core strength. It's like uh, practical strength. Practical strength. It's not just doing curls. Not just doing curls. It's good. It's good. Keep your hips high and keep your legs through. It's good. War machine was designed for American servicemen working in the Gulf as a way for them to be able to train anywhere, anytime. Uh, it can be attached to any kind of pole or fastener on a vehicle and allows you to create resistance using your body weight. You can attach weights to it. It's very gymnastic in nature. Uh, you can get a lot of exercises and stretches that you wouldn't normally be able to do at a gym. And it's a very effective form of uh, exercise. My toe dug into the <coughs> canvas, but his punch did cause me to fall. If he didn't punch me, I would have like, caught my footing. So it was a fair knockdown, but I was just at first, I was like, all right. And then I was like, fuck, I lost this round. Then he got me a liver kick in the third round, which knocked me down, that, that hurt me. And then he kept going for the liver. Okay. His pace was slower, like he was like, hum, hum, hum. And I was going, hum, hum, hum. You know, so he had more power in his punches. I should have used my jab more. I should have just boxed him. That's just experience, you know, it's good. You know, be like fucking Muhammad Ali next week. <laughs> So, All right. My debut, but I wasn't fighting 70 kilos. I was fighting 85. It's a new weight division, so hopefully, I'll make a tournament out of it. Maybe I can make my way back in. So. Oh, I taught a guy what nuts and balls were today in my English lesson because it was about accidents and injuries. So the most severe accident or injury for a, a man is getting hit in the nuts. <laughs> Yes, you don't know this song. This music.
You're in the 80, on the 85 kilo division, which is really important. You got to, well, you know you're going to win this division. So, so today is just the first day of many days to come. But it's important, you know, you stay focused. Yeah, thank you. So, let's hit that. See how that feels. That feels like a rock. <laughs> I'm pretty damn good at what I do. <laughs> look at this sweat on my head. 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 No, no, do your, your famous uh, thing. Knock him the fuck out. Knock him the fuck out. <laughs> that has got to be the worst message I have ever seen in my life. This is it. Team Bungling Bay Spirit. We're going all out. And Yan, he's definitely giving it hell out.